I know this is his favorite song, so I had to sing it for him this morning. Let's just thank God for shedding his blood. He was despised and rejected, led down by his very own. He came to seek and save every soul that was lost. They shouted, Hosanna, then the same lips they crucified. So he hung his head at Calvary for me and you to die. If he had not been willing to take my place Some's just a fable and a lie But that blood-stained tree saved my life There came a day I tried to make it on my own but that didn't get me very far down this life's road. So I called his name and bowed my knees and head to the floor. He came in and changed my life. Now I'm free forevermore. And I thank God for crimson red. Two wooden beams and the thorns upon his head And I don't know where I'd be today If he had not been willing to take my place Some it's just a fable and a lie But that blood-stained tree saved my life There came a day I tried to make it on my own But that didn't get me very far down this life's road So I called his name And bowed my knees and headed to the floor He came changed my life now I'm free forevermore and I thank God for crimson red two wooden beams and the thorns upon his head and I don't know where I'd be today if he had not been willing to take my place to some it's just a fable ain't a lie but that blood-stained tree saved my life you may be bound by the shackles of your sins weary and broken from the pain and fight within But there's still a fountain Flowing from his veins And it's got the power to break all your chains And you can thank God For crimson red And I thank God For crimson red Two wooden beams and the thorns upon his head And I don't know where I'd be today If he had not been willing to take my place Some it's just a fable in a lie 
But that bloodstained tree saved my life You may be bound by the shackles of your sins Weary and broken from the pain and fire within there's still a fountain flowing from his veins and it's got the power to break all your chains it's got the power to break all your chains it's got the power to break all your chains Got the power to break all your chains. It's got the power to break all your chains. And you can thank God for crimson red. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad they went and took your place? Yeah. Hallelujah. That song says, I don't know where I'd be if he hadn't took my place. Well, I know where I'd be. I know where I'd be, Dwayne. I'd be burning right now. He made a way that I can have life and have it more abundant. He made a way for you that you could have life and have it more abundant. You know, if we don't partake in it, it's our fault. It's because of me, because of my stubborn will. I went for years and wouldn't partake. I wanted it, <laughs> and I believed. I believed. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble. I wanted it, but I wasn't willing to let him be God. I wanted to be God. I wanted to rule. I wanted to reign. You can't do it that way. You can't do it that way. You got to let him be God. If you let him be God, he will take over. <laughs> and he'll turn your mess into something worthwhile. But if you don't, it'll be a mess right on and on and on and on until we go. And then we know where we'll be. Amen. Hallelujah. I love him, don't you? Hallelujah. Give him a cheer. Uh, hallelujah. You know, the enemy, he wants us to, to be stuck back in yonder, <laughs> back in where we used to be or where we was yesterday. But you know, today is a new day. His word tells us his mercy is new every morning. Every morning. All you got to do, you get up and you say, Lord, help me. I can't make it without you. I can't. I can't make it without him. His mercies are new. They're not, it's not yesterday's mercy. You know, we can remember back. We can look back on yesterday. And we can see how good he was to us then. And then the enemy comes along and he convinces, no, it ain't like that. But every morning, when you wake up in the morning, every day is a new day. Today's a new day for everybody in here. What's past is past. You can't do nothing about that. It's already done. It's already over with. But what's out yonder is to come. And it's up to me and it's up to you what you get from our God. Amen. Amen. Sister Tinker, come testify. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. You know, our God is a big, big God. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing he can't do for you. Nothing, nothing. Whatever you brought in with you today, he is willing to take it away. You just lay it at his feet and leave it there. Leave it there. He died for you. He shed that blood just so you could be free. Just so you could be what he wants you to be. But all you've got to do is just surrender that. Sometimes we want to come to the altar, lay it down. But when we get up, we pick it up and take it back. We can't do that. You've got to just leave it down there leave it down there just say God I don't know what to do but I'm giving it to you I'm going to let you rule my life I'm going to let you do what you want me to do you say what you want me to say let me walk where you want me to walk let me talk the way you want me to talk just surrender completely and totally to him sometimes we just don't want to do that this flesh doesn't it doesn't it's flesh but just Surrender, surrender completely and totally to him and say, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, and he'll always be there for you. Yes. Ain't you glad he's merciful? You know what? Every one of us, the Bible says all our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's nasty. The best I got. All my righteousness is worthless. It's nothing. But when he puts his blood on it, it changes things. It takes a dark, unrighteous, sinner person and turns it white. He said, I'll make your, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make you white as snow. The blood of Jesus is powerful. You know, he's, he's powerful in that he can do anything. He's been given a name that's above every name. His name is higher than anything. It's higher than any sickness. But you know the best thing is greater than all your sin. Every bit of it is greater than all of it. He wants to change you today. Amen. Let him. Let's let him. Brother Tim, you got a song, brother? Bless him, Lord. You know, to plant, you've got to fix the ground. And if you're going to do corn, I don't know how everybody else does. I soak mine a little bit. Then I put it in the ground. Well, I don't leave it there. But I watch it. If it's dry, I water it a little bit. And when it comes up, i got to dig around it. Ain't you glad God digs around us? Oh, we get so far along and we think we're undiggable. But oh, God comes along and shows you, you need dug around. Some of it needs thinned out. See, you got things you got to thin out if you're going to make it tonight, today. Yeah, behind the hay. Well, you dig around that corn. But you don't stop there. You've got little, little fellers uh, that pop up out of there that call weeds. And you got to get them out. Because if you don't, they will swallow up the corn and the corn can't breathe. But if you get all the weeds out and get it hoed out real good, then that corn's going to produce. Well, so it produces it, and you've got about six or seven years up on that stalk of corn. You can't leave them there. But there's another key to it. You've got to watch them ears, and you can't pick them too early because you won't get nothing. You can't pick them too late because the worms will get in them. But you pick that ear of corn just right, but that ain't it. You got to take that corn in. You got to shuck it. You got to clean it up real good. You got to have your pot of boiling water. Drop that corn in there and pull it out at the right time. See, we're all the time pulling out things at the wrong time. And that's when we get in trouble when we try to pull the wrong time. Get in the time. See the time. Go the time. Hear the time. See the time. Obey the time. And watch the time.
Hallelujah. God's a farmer, ain't he? <laughs> Good to see Brother Johnny back there. Brother Johnny, you want to come and testify? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? It's good to be here. Uh, I want to say I hope all the daddies are having a good daddy's day, father's day, whatever. Amen. Should have. It's the day that the Lord has made. But you know, I want to give praise to the father of the lives. Amen. Amen. The one that laid down his life, that I could have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And I was thinking about, you know, at the foot of the cross, the, the ground is level. And we don't realize, we talk about Jesus being crucified, but if you look at it, the word bled. The word bled. He washed us with his own blood. He washed us with his word. Amen. He hung between the heavens and the earth so we could come down here today and praise him. Amen. To give him glory. To give him honor that he deserves. Amen. You know, uh, John said, no greater joy that I have that my children walk in truth. You know, and that's what God gives, gives him joy for us to walk in his truth, to walk in his light and, and be the sons and daughters of God in this hour that we're supposed to be. And sometimes it's not easy, but he's always went before us and made the crooked place straight. Amen. He's always there for you. Amen. You can't be a loser if you live for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, we ought to praise him from, from our hearts and our soul. Give him all that we got because he gave all he had. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. When we get in that place, then we can lift up our hands and say, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall condemn. For this is my heritage, amen. I received, I received the fact that the word bled and washed me and made me one of his sons, amen. Made you one of his sons, daughters, amen. We're the children of the most high God, amen. We're a peculiar people, amen. A holy nation, amen. Thank God for the anointing that destroys the yoke, amen. Well, I'm going to run you all off. <laughs> We actually asked me to sing a song I ain't sung a long time. I don't even know if I can remember it. Amen. Uh, but uh, how many is how on, on this journey working for the Lord? Amen. Amen. Willing to lay aside every weight and the sin that would so easily beset us. Amen. The world's getting worse and worse, so that gives us the opportunity to get better and better and to shine brighter and brighter. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Once again, I'm on the road. Working for Jesus and the can't be explained. It's a hard, hard life, but it won't last forever. And what's ahead is worth. To hear the people talk, they say I'm crazy. To take on this job forsaken, all I own. But I'll get a whole lot more than what I'm giving. I'll receive a crown of life when I get home. When I leave the soul, I'm bound for heaven. And I'll join all my loved ones who
Oh, but most of all at last, I'll see my Jesus. And I'll live with him in peace forevermore. When I take my final flight, he will be waiting. With arms I stretch and loving nail piercing. Listen, church, and life so long the years cannot be counted. The crown of life when I get home. When I leave the soul world, I'm bound for heaven. How many is bound for heaven today? I'll join all my loved ones who's gone on before. You see all your mamas and daddies, your wives and husbands and children, grandchildren, children, whatever, who's gone on one day, church, we're going to join them. Receive a crown of life when I get home. Give him a hand clap of praise, sir. I mean, he's looking forward to that day. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Sarah to come and testify. Give her a big cheer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ain't it good to be back in the house of the Lord? Amen. I want to wish all of the fathers a happy Father's Day. You know, the Lord was sitting back there talking to me. And um, I kind of had a feeling I was going to be asked to testify because, you know, that's how it always goes. But I was thinking, you know, there's a difference in being a physical father and a spiritual father. But, you know, God requires fathers to be both and the problem is is a lot of men want just to be the physical father if that and not the spiritual father mothers are wonderful we are wonderful okay but there's something about the father he is the head of the household and if the father is not being the spiritual father of the household then the household is weak not saying you're, you're not saying that you're not strong in the Lord, but you are weaker without the head of your household. And God spoke to me and said that he is calling the men of the church to rise up, be the head of your household, spiritually and physically. And you know what that requires? A little bit of Bible reading, not a little bit, a lot, a lot of praying. Because your household's waiting to follow you, but they can't follow you if you don't lead them. They can't follow if you're standing still. And God is, is waiting for the men of his church, not just this church, but the men of his church to start moving. Because the women are waiting to follow you all. But we can't follow if you don't move. And I want to thank God that he's blessed me with a wonderful husband that is not only the physical head of our house, but the spiritual head of our house. He leads us, and he's the spiritual head of this house. And I thank God because I know God's blessed me and you with him. But I want to thank God for all the fathers in here. But I'm telling you, he's calling us up higher. We got to come up higher because without you coming up higher, the move is going to be harder. There is a move coming. But if you don't want to move, then it ain't going to happen you got to get your foot out of the quicksand and start moving. Because the more you stand still, the more you sink. And God said it's time to come up a little higher. Even us women got to come up a little higher. But the men, you are the head of your household. It's time to come up a little higher. God is calling. Are you going to answer? Amen. Let's 
she was as she was testifying and talk about fathers I was reminded of an old saying you can't teach what you don't know and, and you can't lead where you won't go all right daddies <laughs> daddies we're gonna teach and we're gonna lead we got to be what God wants us to be Amen. give a good big hand for Pastor Wesley Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. God will shabbat Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Blessings to you. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. Tell somebody, say, I feel Jesus. Amen. And he's in this place. My soul burns within me. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus in this place. I mean, he's glad to be here on Father's Day. Amen. Celebrating the goodness of God. Amen. Give Jesus one more great hand clap for all of our fathers and Amen. My dads, we thank God for you, amen, and all that you do, amen, for, for your family and uh, for the church. And, uh, but as the uh, first lady of this house challenged us, me, and let's do what God's put in her heart for us to do. Let's lead, amen. And uh, I find out that uh, being a leader is not telling somebody what to do, but it's being first partaker. It's, any for, it's easy for anybody to sit back and tell you what to do and you not do it. Always used to bother me and someone say go on a seven day fast. I'd always look back and say go on it with me. Come on somebody. Does anybody can tell me what to do but can you help me lead and do it. Amen. And uh, so I thank God for the word of the Lord. Amen. It's come all this morning. It's good to see my daddy. Amen. My, my, my dad and my spiritual father. Amen. Lead, uh, living and leading a great spiritual life, amen, and I uh, thank God for, for him, amen, and uh, being here this morning, praise the Lord, he helped me yesterday, set up our gospel tent, we got our tent up in Morristown, if you've been on Facebook, and uh, all of those that came down from the church, it wasn't a requirement, but some of you have made effort to come, will you please stand if you was there yesterday, thank you. Look at all these people who came to help me yesterday. Amen. Come on, let's give them a great big hand. I know some of you would have. If you could have been there, you would have. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But I do want to give honor to these people that came and helped their pastor. Amen. Get this, this tip up. Amen. Uh, the people in the Morristown region are excited and ready. Uh, we're having more church support this time than we had the last time. And uh, if two or three be together together, Jesus said he'd be in the midst of them. And uh, so I'm looking forward to what God's going to do starting next Friday night. So you got to keep praying for me. We just came out of five nights of uh, revival in Scottsboro, Alabama with Pastor Will Banks. Praise the Lord. And uh, God moved. The house was packed every night. They wanted me to bring my tent back and, uh, and just see what God. They're trying to get me the fairgrounds in Scottsboro for me to bring my tent sometime. So you got to pray for the pastor. Amen. God's using us here and there and everywhere, and that's what we're wanting uh, to be used by the Lord. And uh, I'll give you some good news. If everything works out great and fine, they're going to be with us the first weekend in August. Amen. So uh, we're excited about having them. Amen. I want you. To, I want to come to you for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Praise the Lord. How many believes in giving to the storehouse of God and being a blessing? So I want you to get your... Uh, offering together and ready to tithe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Austin. Praise God. How I many knows it's blessed, more blessed to give what than it is to receive? But it's really blessed when you get to do both. Amen. And so when you give, you actually are giving to yourself because you're helping keep a place going where you and your family can come and bless the Lord. Amen. 
Father God, I thank you for the gifts that's being given. I thank you for every person that showed up that's tithing into the storehouse, tithing to the church, God, to keep the church doors open and keep us functioning and doing what you've called us to do, God, uh, to fulfill the vision that you have for this place. It's not my vision, it's your vision. It's not what I want, it's what you want, God. So we say yes to you, Will, and yes to your way as we give in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's bid to believe it. Said, Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I have because I give. And I give because I have. And let the Lord bless you in your giving. Amen. I see Sister Renee back there. Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you. I see Sister Libby here. She's a uh, great friend of our family. This is her first time here. You live in Morganton? Is that right? She lives in, she came all the way up from Morganton this morning. Now, I've known Sister Libby since I was, I never understood when the old people say, I knew you since I was knee high to a tadpole or something like that. I'm like, what that mean? That means when you're really, really, really little. And I've known Sister Libby uh, for a great long time, a great friend of our family, great friends of my mother, amen. And so we thank God that she got to be here this morning. She'd been wanting to come up and be with us. But Morganton is a little long haul, but she made the effort to be here this morning, amen. So we thank God for that. Just tell two or three people, say, I'm glad to see you. It's good to see Gideon with us this morning, amen. Been missing him, glad that he's here on Father's Day. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, we started last Sunday. Uh, talking about the life of Samson and I really wasn't looking ahead that much you know y'all know me as your pastor uh, I'm not a holiday preacher so most of the time I don't try to correlate a message with the Father's Day Mother's Day unless just the Lord really allows me to do so well the Lord allowed me to do so amen uh, it actually when I started this I had no clue I'd be preaching this today on Father's Day I just heard the voice of God say, start preaching about Samson, the things I give you. And so um, we're going to go back and visit his life again. We'll look at really the beginning, more of his parents than himself. So the book of Judges, chapter 13, if you would please. And um, if you'll bear with me a little bit this morning. My, my reading may just be a little lengthier than normal, but it'll be for context sake. All right. Judges chapter 13, verse number 8 was where we'll begin. If you, well, just to give you, uh, for if you wasn't here last Sunday or didn't get to hear the message, we find that uh, Manoah's wife was out in the field one day, barren, had no children. The angel of the Lord showed up and said, you're going to have a child, watch what you eat, but he's going to begin to deliver the children of Israel from uh, the hand of the Philistines and so we stopped at verse 5 um, let's read we'll start I was going to read at 8 but just to, we'll start reading at 6 and uh, so you can hear hear this and I want you to listen I don't just want you to hear me reading I want you to listen to the story so when we preach it it makes more sense it says then the woman came and told her husband saying a man of God came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God very terrible and that word terrible means very powerful or reverence and uh, he says but I asked him not whence he was neither told he me his name but he said unto me behold thou shalt conceive and bear a son and now drink no wine nor strong drink neither eat any unclean thing for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death and so now we're going to pick up then Manoah this is Samson's father entreated the Lord and said oh my Lord let the man of God uh, which did a uh, sin come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God came unto the woman and she said in the field but Manoah her husband was not with her and the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that he came unto me the other day. And Manoah rose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? 
And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we do, or excuse me, how shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor let any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Verse 15. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, Thou, the, the, though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, that we may honor or do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret. So Manoah took a kid with the meat offering and offered it upon the rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. Can we say amen? Father God, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, God, for the timing of your word, for it's perfect. God, I thank you for the messages that you've given me, for it's perfect for this day, for this hour, for this time. God, I'm asking you to anoint me as you have all week long, God. I know I'm weak in voice, weak in body, but God, I believe I'm strong in the spirit today and that that strength is going to be made perfect in my physical weakness, God. I ain't believing that somebody's leaving this place different by your power and spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people that believe it said amen and amen. Come on, will you clap your hands and praise the Lord? Amen. Blessings to you. You may be seated. I want to preach from the subject this morning going right into the afternoon hours. And I know you have plans and eatings and things you need to do. Uh, but I'm going to preach what God gave me. And, uh, and then you can go do all of that. Amen. I want to preach from this subject, the second visit. Amen. Tell somebody, say the second visit. One more time, find somebody else and say the second visit. The second visit. The first angelic visitation happened to Manoah's wife, but not to Manoah. Not to Manoah. He was not present when the angel of the Lord showed up and started talking to Samson's mother. And so as we read within the text that... Uh, when she hears this and knows that God has spoken to her, she then goes, finds her husband, and, and tells her because, uh, excuse me, tells him because she realizes something that she can't have a child without her husband. Can somebody say amen? I ain't got time to preach on that right now. Said, so I, she came and told him, and when she told Manoah, that the angel of the Lord showed up and told me that I'm going to have a child. We never had one before. And his countenance was awesome. And it was something like just an out-of-body experience almost for Manoah's wife. He, the Bible says that he, listen to what he did here. We may read and preach this a little bit. When he hears this, it says, Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst sin, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do in the child that shall be born. When Manoah hears of that experience, Timmy, he says, I want to have that same experience. He went like, well, oh well, good for you. Hallelujah, I'm glad you danced, I'm glad you felt something, I'm glad you shouted, I'm glad you got... When he heard this, he said, man, I want that myself. Oh my God in heaven. 
It made him want it so bad that he started going and talking to the Lord and say, Lord, send back that messenger again because I just don't want to hear about it from my wife. I, I, it wasn't that he wasn't happy that she had it. It wasn't that he did, wasn't excited that she got a word. It wasn't that uh, he wasn't excited. But he said, I want to feel what she felt. I want to see what she saw. I want to experience. I just don't want to hear about it. I believe he got tick and tired of of hearing about it. I've heard about this every day. Oh my God. She wakes up talking about it. At lunchtime she talks about it. At supper time she talks about it. She talks about it in the sleep about it. And I'm tired of hearing about it. I want to feel that for myself. I, I want to experience that same power. I want that experience. And when I read that Manoah started talking to God, I began to hear God say, if my people will not be satisfied in what they've heard from other men and women of God but they will say God I want to feel it and I want oh I feel something in here and I want to see it and I want to be a partaker of it and let me tell you something I thank God for what he did with A.A. A. Allen and I, I thank God for what he did with Jack Cole and Amy Simple McPherson and Brother Hall and Brother West but guess what it's not enough for me just to hear about it I myself want to walk in the glory of God I myself Myself, I want to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. I myself want to see the blind eyes come open and the lame walk and the deaf hear and the dead be raised and the lost be saved and the backslider come in. It's not enough just for me to be hearing about it. Just somebody say, it's good to hear about it, but I want to see it for myself. I want to lay a hold of it to myself. I want to walk in the glory of it myself. And is there anybody in this place that can just take your hands and throw them up and lift up your voice and say do it again God that's what Manoah was saying do it again God send your power again God send your anointing again God send your glory again God we missed it the first time but God we want to feel it this time Lord I wasn't there the first time but God let me feel it again the second time is there anybody believing that God's going to do it again on this Father's Day I dare every man and every woman to clap your hands if you believe God is going to do it again do it again do it again send us another visit God send us another visit God send us the power again Lord send it to us again and so he had been praying and it didn't happen immediately because it says a few days later so by the first time that it happened uh, the, he, she tells him and Manoah begins to inquire waking up every day wanting to see wanting to hear wanting to feel and it didn't happen immediately but I believe he kept believing it's going to happen for me it's going to happen for me it's going to I got to believe that it's going to happen for me and so one day the book says that after he entreated the Lord and it says and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field but again Manoah her husband was not with her so here looks like it's going to happen again but listen to what happens it says and oh God I feel like having church and the woman made haste and ran to her husband and said unto him behold the man that hath appeared unto me the other day has come again as soon that he, as Manoah's wife sees the angel of the Lord she gets up from the place that she is at and she runs to find Manoah and said hey the one you've been praying to see is over here see let me tell you something when God begins to move in the place you don't need to keep it to yourself God I feel like having church but you need to run to your family and say your healers over here you need to run to the community and say your deliverers over here you ought to run and say what you've been looking for I'm 
know where it's at. My God, is there anybody going to get an anointing on you today to go run and tell everybody like the woman that met Jesus at the well when she met Jesus and he talked to her. She ran back into the city and said, hey, come see a man that told me everything that I ever done. Come see the blind eye opener. Come see the man that can make the lame walk and deaf hear. It is not our time to come to the church and sit on the seat and do nothing and just say, pastor, do it. Preacher, do it. Deacon, do it. But if the glory of God is what you're after, you ought to be running and telling everybody that I know that he's here and he's here to heal and he's here to deliver and he's here to make a way out. Right now, if you're going to get an anointing on you to run and open up your mouth, take a few seconds and say, God, you can entrust me with the message. I'm not going to tell them I'm here, but I'm going to tell them, hey, Jesus is here. I want us to look at something. The angel of the Lord. Can I preach a few more minutes? The angel of the Lord shows up here. She's here. She runs to Manoah. And says, Manoah, the angel of the Lord is back over here. I'm going to show you something. The angel of the Lord did not come to Manoah. But listen here, men. Manoah had to drop everything that he was doing. Read, uh, let me read the text. Let me read the text. I want you to show you. The woman made haste, ran, showed her husband, saying, Behold, the man has appeared that came to me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, are you the man that spake to my wife? And he said, I am. Let's take a look here. He didn't say, let me finish my daily chores. Let me finish hunting. Let me finish fishing. Let me finish bowling. Let me finish playing sports. Let, let me finish doing what I want to do. He was so hungry. He said, I'm dropping everything that I'm doing because I want to be a part of what God did in my wife. I've come to tell every person in here, there's coming a day that you're going to have to choose over the glory or yourself. And the way you're going to have to choose the glory is say, I'm putting everything else to the side and I'm going to get in the presence of God, I dare you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, what do you want? You can't have it your way and God's way. But there comes a choice that you've got to make to say, I'm dropping it all. Because I want to feel what they felt. I want to see what they saw. And I can't do it. I've come to tell you, the Lord will come halfway. But then you've got to come the rest of the way. And what's wrong with the church is if God don't do it all for us, then we get upset but there's coming a people that's saying God if you do your part I'll do mine God if you show up in the building I'll show up in the building oh I feel like God. can I preach it here today God is inspiring some people to get up and say I'm getting to that place I'm gonna drop. if I make somebody mad that's alright if somebody don't get like what I'm doing that's alright I looking for a move of God. I'm looking for the anointing of God. I'm looking to see what God is wanting to do. Not my will, but thy will. Oh, does somebody say you got to drop all you got. You got to and go get and meet him. Go meet him. Go meet him. Go meet him. Go, he's showing up. You got to meet him. Come to tell you, if you're watching me on Facebook today and you're close enough to have been here but didn't come, sorry, you might like this message, but you ain't going to get nothing from this message like you would if you was here. As there comes a moment where you got to say, I'm getting out of my pajamas. I'm going to get up early and drink my coffee. Oh, I feel like I had the church. And I'm going to run to the place where God's power is at, where God's anointing is at. Because well, God ain't just going to come to your house all the time. You got to 
get up and get in his house and when we come together to say Lord I want to see him because when Manoah and his wife came they came to see the one that had showed up I pray to God today you didn't come just to hear me preach I pray you didn't come just because we got good music I pray you didn't come because we just got a nice church but I pray you showed up because you want to feel the glory of God and you want to feel the power of God and you want to spirit on your life right now tell your hands up and say I want you God I'm here for you God I'm here to feel your touch because if he don't show up we're wasting our time if he don't show up then this is a waste of space but if he comes and we come oh how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity for it's like the all oh, that ran on air this ain't about you just go ahead and preach to somebody and say this is not about you this is about the presence of God and what God is wanting to do among us let me finish my Father's Day message tell somebody say drop what you got yeah, yeah. don't know what he is doing but as soon as he heard see that's what's wrong with people they start praying for God to do something and then when it's time for them to do their part to get God to do it they want to sit on the seat of do nothing and say I'm tired I'm busy got other things going on I will ask you, how bad do you want it? How, how, how oh, see, I'm the, how bad, oh, I feel like having church. How bad do you want it? How bad, because if you, if it's bad enough for you to pray about it, then it ought to be something that you want something about. I want it bad enough to give up everything to follow the Jesus that I am trying to obtain. The one that's got a hold of me, I'm trying to get a hold of him. God just gave me a revelation. Day one, it happens to Manoah's wife. She comes in excited. And he wants to see it. God waits a few days. Because there's nothing like time that will check your desire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like having a honeymoon. That's not marriage. That's day one. That's a, let's check it to see if you won't be married after about 10 years. And see, sometimes that's why God waits before, between promise and fulfillment. Because he wants to see how bad do you really want it. And anybody wants it bad when you're shouting and Alexis is singing, I'm so tired of your devil and people are rolling through the floor. Oh yeah, but let me check you about Tuesday at 12 midnight. And God says, get up and pray. Now, I don't feel like it. Oh, you said you wanted it on Sunday. But are you willing after the excitement is gone? And see, that's why I'm trying to raise up saints that are not just hype happy. Oh, see, anybody, you know, I've got to wonder sometimes. I said, God, why is it when certain people show up to church and we have preachers come in that things happen? He said, the only difference between your services and theirs is the people are excited and they've gotten used. I'm preaching in here. They're anticipating because they think it's through the vessel. But I've come to tell you, it ain't the vessel. Because if the vessel is empty, you ain't getting nothing. It's what comes out of the vessel. So you ought to be excited whether I'm preaching or whether Deacon Josh is preaching or whether Noah is preaching or somebody you don't know is preaching. Because it's not about the vessel. It's about what flows from the vessel. The grass looks green on the other side. That means you might want to fertilize yours. Quit and get excited about going to everybody else's meeting and excited about what God's doing. In some other, I'm glad what God's doing in some other part of the country. But the God that's doing it in that part of the country is the same God that's doing it here. And if you quit being half in and half out, because it ain't your way, and make up with your mind, I'm going it God's way, then the same glory that's going on in California, Texas, Canada, I don't, I, they don't fall in this house. And the power of God will be seen. And we'll have another visitation. Glory to God. 
Can I keep preaching in here? I mean, listen, I'm going to close. And Manoah said, he said he told him, this, yeah, I'm the one that came the other day. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And what shall we do unto him? Now, Manoah says, all right, I'm glad I, I, I'm getting a child. I'm getting a son that I've never had before. Oh, I'm excited. I mean, daddies in here, remember you first. How excited you was. Come on, that's what made you a dad. You were just a husband. You had some children. What makes you a father is you have children. Hello, somebody. And they don't always have to be blood. Come on now. Don't always have to be blood. You raising them. So he's about to now be from being a husband to being dual to being a husband and father. But he says something. And so he says, what, what do I need to do? How do, I, how do I need to handle? That's what he's asking. How, how do I need to handle this? Because I don't want to handle this wrong. He said, what do we do? I don't want to handle what God's given me wrong. Just because God gives you a gift, don't mean you get to do with it what you want to do with it. I'm preaching in here. But you ought to say, God, I thank you for the gift. Now, will you tell me how to handle this thing? I don't want it my way. And see, that's a lot of things. We get all pride because when God gives us something, we think we've done something to earn it. And so we act like we can do what we want to with it. But I've come to tell you, you can't do with your gift. What, what you just want to do with it but you got to say God I thank you for giving me the gift and now I want you to tell me how to use this gift because I just don't want to do it my way but there's a way that seemeth right to a man but the end thereof are the ways of death see that's what gets us in trouble God blesses us and then we don't think we need God anymore but when God entrusts me with something I better pray more than I've ever prayed and I better fast more than I've ever fasted and I better seek the book more than I've ever sought it because I don't want to mess up what God's given me but I want it to flourish I want it to be the best I want it to grow and I'll do what I've done my, my father is here today handled something with so much uh, taught me how to handle something with so much great uh, grace because when I first started preaching I started preaching real young kind of like Josiah and Noah Real young, and so when that comes, that, that, that it's it's an impression that, that is made on people, and they become impressed, and so they really start bragging on on a young child, and so daddy's a minister, and people come up and they tell daddy, they say, "Oh, you don't watch out, Wesley's gonna pass you up," and my father would always tell him, "He better." Because he said he'd always tell him, "I want him to do more than me." I want him to preach in places I've never preached. I want him to see things I've never saw. I want him, oh God Almighty. He never got upset. And see, that's what real leadership is. Is saying, you ain't behind me, but get up on my shoulders so you can get higher than I've ever been. See, that's why we got to handle this thing right. And that's why it's not been handled right. Because we think it's just about us. But to handle something right means that you push it greater than yourself. Oh. I want to handle this ministry right I want to handle this anointing right I want to handle my spiritual sons and daughters right I want them to do more than I'm doing So he says to him As I told your wife So I'm going to tell you Don't let her eat anything That's unclean Don't let her drink no strong drink Because what you're carrying Is too important to contaminate like I told you last Sunday, you got to look at what you're carrying and say, I can't just eat anything. Because what might feel good to me may cost my destiny. Because, oh God, it may cost it. So he says, don't eat anything. I preached that last week. And so Manoah said, all right. And he says, listen, listen to what he says here. And Manoah said to the angel, Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee. Oh God, det detain. He said, oh, he's in the presence. And, and Manoah's not like good enough. Okay, he showed up good, told me, what, told my wife good, told us what to do. Now leave. Daddy, he said, let us detain. 
In other words, let us keep thee. <laughs> Oh, God, please don't leave us just yet. We're glad that you're here, and we're glad that you spoke to us, and we're glad what you're going to do in our lives, but we, we, we want you to stay. Oh, is there anybody can throw your hands up and say, Lord, don't leave us just yet. I know it's 15 after 12, and some of you ready to go eat now, but there's somebody in here that says, Lord, stay a little bit longer, because this is why I really came. I didn't come to get in Pastor Ward's presence. I just didn't come to see my brothers and sisters but Lord I come to get in your presence because Psalm 16 and 11 says in his presence there's fullness of joy at his right hand of pleasures forevermore you may tell you the difference between the old saints and the new saints is the old saints when the presence of God would come in they wasn't leaving until they left they wouldn't they didn't worry about what else was going on they didn't care about work the next day they didn't care about the TV show Almighty. But they say, Lord, we want your presence. I've been in services. I can remember being in services with Daddy, and I felt the presence of God leaving. But all of a sudden, one would start saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that thing that was lifted began to set back down again. Oh, and people started getting another touch. And then I'd see it begin to leave again as a child. But somebody else would say, Oh, we need more. Oh, we need more. And what was going to leave begin to set back down again. Oh, does anybody want that? I Maybe I'm in a building that nobody else wants that. Maybe you just want a few services a month and feel good about yourself about throwing a dollar in an offering plate. But for me, I want to be in his presence. I want to detain him. I want to keep him. I want to hold on to him. He said, we want to detain you. I'm going to hurry up and finish. I got too much to preach. He said, we want to detain you. Because uh, we want to we want to cook for you, we want to bless you. <laughs> we we don't want you to leave empty-handed. Oh God, it makes somebody mad. There's a lot of church folk. They come uh, and they treat the church worse than they do the restaurant. Because when you go to the restaurant, you have to pay. There's a lot of people just like ah, I ain't giving nothing. Hold on. But when somebody gets blessed, you're like, oh, God, what can I do? What can I do to return? And so, so he started making a meal. And, he, and Manoah starts asking some questions, real quick questions. And he says, what is your name so we can honor your name when this comes to pass? He said, please, we want, we want to be able to tell folk oh, what your name is. See, we should praise the name huh? when what the name told us when it comes to pass. Oh, Jesus. Tell somebody, say, I'm going to praise his name. Now, now, listen to what it says. The angel said, why are you asking me my name? Because right now, it's a secret. Uh, he, sa he said, this, this name I have, it's a a secret name uh, it can only be revealed uh, I got to thinking daddy about that name now Manoah and his wife did not know the name of the angel because he said I can't tell you because it's a secret so without them even knowing the name of the one that was blessing them they begin to praise him now we uh, that have the revelation of the secret we know the name I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about Allah. I'm not talking about Confucius. Oh, I'm not talking about any other Zortarian name. But I'm talking about the name that is above every name. Can I preach Jesus today? You would get upset if I preach Jesus. The name that blind eyes come open. The name that the deaf hear. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Thank God and the righteous run into it. Hi, 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 hi. And they are saved. Tell somebody say, I know the name. I know the name. So I'm going to praise the name. I'm going to praise his name. Because his name shall be called Wonderful. He shall be called Counselor. His name shall be called the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and the Everlasting Father. What's his name today? 
I'm not praising over somebody else's name, but I'm praising him over the name of Jesus. Somebody shout his name. Somebody praise his name. Somebody a greater rep than church at 20 minutes after 12. Take you a praise break over the name of Jesus. Will you, will you help me do a favor real quick? Look, look at somebody and say, you want to know a secret? Look at them and go, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, some of you were looking for some latest gossip. You know, you, you wanted to find out who been talking to who and who been doing this and that. But I come to tell you another secret. I come to tell you a secret that will change your life. I have come to tell you a secret that when you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Is it all right if I talk about Jesus? There's people that don't want to. They can say you can mention God, but don't mention his name. You don't mind Buddha's name name being mentioned. You don't mind Confucius's name being mentioned. You don't mind any other Greek gods being mentioned. Well, let me tell you something. I will not sit down and I will not be silent but the name of God or oh, as his name is Jesus and that's who I call on in the midnight hour is the name of Jesus. Manoah said, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Oh, because with you, when I, if I know your name, then when this comes to pass, I can't say Manoah did it. When this comes to pass, I can't say my wife did it. When this comes to pass, I can't say the preacher did it. When this comes to pass, the name that I got to praise is the name of the Lord. I want you right now to take a few seconds and give glory to his name. Oh, that's what the old saints would say. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Oh, I give him glory. I give him glory. I'm giving glory to his name. Oh, what's his name? Oh, we sing a song. Bless that. That kind of wonderful night felt some. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. For there's no other name that I know right now. Now bless him, GRC. I gotta, everybody stand, I'm done. Just give me my last little two points here. Can somebody say the second visit? The second visit. Oh, Manoah said to the angel, we want to detain you until we made you something to eat. And the angel of the Lord said, Unto Manoah, even though you're going to detain me, I, I'm not going to eat the bread. But listen, if that will offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that the, it was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel, Oh God, can I preach in here just a second? And Manoah said to the angel, <laughs> God, what is thy name and what is the so when these sayings come to pass that we may do the honor and the angel of the Lord said unto him why are you asking my name seeing it's a secret so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon the rock unto the Lord now I'm going to just stop for a second he, he's not like most modern day church folk he'll be like well if you don't tell me your name I'm not going to do nothing If the preacher don't ask me to sing, I ain't doing nothing. Pastor, don't take my call my name. I ain't doing nothing. If I don't get my way, I ain't doing nothing. He said, I ain't going to tell you because it's a secret. Manoah said, okay, cool. But he started praising the Lord. See, see, when you don't get an answer. <laughs> see, anybody praise him when you get an answer. <laughs> when, you, when God answers you what you've been wanting, you're like, oh, my. 
Man, you can, you can, you can cut a rug. You, you, my God, you can do the Watusi when you get an answer. But I want to know something. Is there anybody in here looking for an answer you ain't got yet? But you say, God, I'm still going to praise you anyhow. God, oh, Lord, I'm still going to worship you anyhow. If you don't tell me, I'm still going to praise you. Oh, my praise is not indicative of what I want. My praise is all about who he is. Is there anybody come to praise him and say, Lord, I'm going to praise you. Ah, I'm going to lift you up. Ah, I want to worship the Messiah. I want to bless you because you're God. You don't have to give me an answer, but I'm going to praise you anyway. You don't have to tell me what I want, but I'm going to praise you anyway. I don't have to get my way, but I'm going to offer up a sacrifice, and I'm going to offer up a praise. Right now, somebody offer up a praise. I've seen this. So he says, uh, so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and he offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And when he did this, and the angel did wondrously. When he began to praise the Lord without an answer, the word wondrously means to reveal to do extraordinary things in a hard or difficult moment. When you get a chance, look it up in the Hebrew. It means to reveal and to do extraordinary things in a hard or difficult moment. The angel of the Lord that was there, Manoah didn't even know that this was the angel of the Lord. But he went to praising the angel of the Lord. And when he got to praising the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord could not stay still. Oh God. The angel of the Lord could not just stop and watch. But the angel of the Lord begin to move in the fire. The angel of the Lord, they begin to watch the angel of the Lord. It says that he began to do wondrous works. He began to dance among them. He began to shout among them. He began to see, I've come to tell you something. When you praise God, it ain't about you just moving. It's about getting God not to move. See, we don't yell just to be yelling. And we don't dance just to be dancing. And we don't shout just to be shouted but when we begin to give him the sacrifice of praise it's so that God will do wondrous works and I've come to tell you you're just one praise away from God doing wondrous works in your house you're just one shout away from God do oh I feel like something in here preach come on somebody somebody throw your hands up and say God move in this house God move amongst your people God All right, fathers, let me show you something. So Manoah took a kid with the meat offering and offered it upon the rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. You not notice something? That after Manoah step, stepped up, it wasn't that Manoah's wife took a kid, took a goat, and offered it for the Lord while Manoah stepped and watched. Manoah stepped up, brothers. Oh, come on. I'm a, I'm, I'm a brother and I'm preaching. Daddies, Manoah stepped up and said, I'm going to be the one to offer the praise. Oh, God. I hope my wife likes it. Hope my wife's here. Hope my wife stays. But I want to see oh, what the Lord just might do. I've come to challenge every man that the rest of this year you ought to be the praise and worship leader of your house. Praise ain't a feminine thing. Worship ain't a woman's thing. Oh, it is for the children of God. And there's something about when a man steps up. When a man begins to dance when a man begins to shout when a man begins to worship when a man begins to sing we're waiting on the men God is wanting a man and when, when the men step up we're going to see an outpouring of the Holy Ghost we're going to see God do everything that he said he would do my 
last point. Does somebody say the second visit? He took it. And Manoah and his wife, they looked on. They started watching the games of the Lord. God Almighty. I, I want to show you something. Can, can, I, can I show you something here real quick? We, we, we think about something wrong from a, maybe, a, maybe not so much wrong, but we really don't see the interjection of it. For it says, when a lost one comes in, that there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of the Lord. Go back and look at it. It doesn't say that the angels of the Lord are rejoicing. It says that there is rejoicing in the presence. Well, who is in the presence? <laughs> who is in the presence of the angels in glory? It's Jesus. <laughs> so when, when one gets right, it's not just the angels dancing. It's not the angels just rejoicing. <laughs> God Almighty, but it's, don't take a look at it, but it's Jesus that's rejoicing, oh it's God that's rejoicing there's rejoicing, see God ain't telling us just to praise so we can do it, but God himself is a praiser, God himself is a worshiper, God himself magnifies his own work by his own power by his own name So the angel of the Lord did wondrous works among them. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off of the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar and Manoah and his wife looked on it and they fell on their faces to the ground. I'm closing. Look, I, I got to reading this and I said, God, what are you trying to say? He said, look at it. When the, they, but he said, I got in the fire and ascended. That means I went up. He said, but I want to remind you in the book of Acts chapter number 2. For oh, Shandana Maya. Oh, in that part of my book. He said I didn't ascend. He said but on when the day of Pentecost. Was fully come. There came a sound from heaven. Like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And cloven tongues of fire. Set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. He said the difference between Manoah. And his wife he is when they praised me. I went up. He said, but if you'll praise me, I'll come down. I feel God today. I'll come down. Is there anybody come to praise him? Is there anybody saying, since he's here, I want to worship him. I need another visit. I'm glad Manoah's wife's caught it. But I'm like Manoah. I need another visit. I want the wonderful works of God to be done to among us. I want God to do what I can do. I want God to say what I can't say. I want to feel what I can't produce. I want to experience what I can't make up. Throw your hands up and say, give us a second visit, God. Give a, oh. If you want a second visit, I want you to be like Manoah. I want you to run up here and get in this altar and say, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again in my house. Do it again in this church. Do it again in this community. Come on, come running up here and give God a sacrifice right now and say, Lord, do wonders among us again. Lord, save our families again. Lord, baptize us in your fire again. Lord, fill this church up. Come on, there ought to be a hunger inside of you to get up here in this altar and kneel before me and say, God, I want it again. God, I'm putting away my pride. God, I'm putting away my thoughts. God, I ain't going to do it my way, but I'm going to do it your way. God, I'm not trying to rationalize this, but God, I'm just going to hear your voice and I'm going to do it because I want it again. I want it again. Come on, you ought to pray in here. You ought to pray with everything that's in you and say God we want it again we want it again we thank you for what you did oh God it's great what you did for them but we want the glory ourselves we want to see it ourselves we want you to show up again we want you to talk to us again we want you to move among us again we want to see your glory we want to see your power yes we want to see come on cry out saints cry out with everything that's in you Give God 
the sacrifice. Call on him and say, God, when you move, I'm not, I'm going to drop everything. I'm coming with you up here in this altar. Start dropping stuff. Start saying, God, I drop this because I want your presence. God, I'm dropping my ideas and my thoughts. But there's a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. I don't want it my way. But God, I want it your way. God, I don't want to do it the way I've always seen it done. But God, I want to know you're here. And I'm running to you. I'm running to you. I'm running to you. I'm running, running. Because I want it. I'm dropping it all. I don't want to miss the visitation. I don't want to miss the next move of God. I don't want to miss it. But I want to feel it for myself. I want to see it myself. God, give us another visitation. And we promise we'll run to it. We promise we'll drop everything else and lay aside every weight and every sin that would so easily beset us. God, it will run the race. God will run the race. God will do it. Whatever you want from us, God, we'll give it because we want your glory. We want to feel it and see it. We need another visitation. We want another visitation. We need another visitation. We want another visitation. Send to God. Give us another day of Pentecost. Send to God. Give us another outpouring. Send to God. Send another great awakening. Send to God. Send the greater. Send the greater. And we'll praise you. God, touch every father in here. Touch every man in here. That when they leave on this Father's Day, that they'll step up to the plate and say, we want the move of God. We just don't want our wives to want it. We just don't want our children to want it. But God, as men, we want to lay aside everything. And we're going to seek you because you need us to be the leaders. We want it ourselves. We want it ourselves. We want it ourselves. Let a hunger get in every man. God, let them lose their appetite. God, let them lose their own desires just to seek you. God, let them seek your kingdom and your righteousness first. And let them know that everything else shall be added into them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Raise up mighty men of God in this house that'll lead in praise, that'll lead in dancing, that'll lead in shouting, that'll lead in worship, that will lead in crying tears, that'll lead in lifting up their voice in prayer. Raise them up. Raise them up. Lord, raise them up. Let the bass of their voice be heard loud like the thunder and the lightning that comes from the sky let it get in every man that then gets to in every boy that is imparted into every girl to where they know what they do to do because they've seen their father do it they've seen their mother do it in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. come on I can't hear you Come on, if you're still in the altar, pray and pray. Give us another visit, God. I'm glad you moved for our forefathers. And Lord, God, I'm just tired of hearing about it. Give us another visit, God. Show up again, God. Show up again, God. Show up again, God. Show up again, God. Move again, God. Move by your power and by your spirit. Yes, yes. Give us another visit, oh Lord. Pour it out, God. Do wondrous works among us. Do wondrous works among us. God, move among us. Reveal yourself among us. Send your glory among us. 
Just raise your hands out there in the sanctuary, whether you're standing or sitting. Just raise them right there. You don't have to stand, but just raise them. And say, God, move among us. Come on, just start asking and say, do wondrous works among us. Start praising him for it now. You know his name. Manoah didn't. Just say, Jesus, do works among us. Come on. Jesus, when you do it, we're going to praise your name. Jesus, when you do it, we're going to worship you. We're calling on your name. We're calling on your name. We're calling on Ola Banaye. Calling on your name. Thank you, Lord. Do it, God, do it. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Do wondrous works among us. Well, we know it ain't us. We know that it's you. I want to move God that's not distinguished by man. I want to move God that is known by you. Well, people will look and say, mm -mm. What's the Lord couldn't have done that? Greater in the church couldn't have done that. That was God. That was God. That was God in the flame. That was God moving among them. That was God working among them. It was God. 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 Uh, if you want to move that only God can produce, clap your hands like you want it now. Yeah. It was God. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm glad for a second visit. I'm glad. I'm glad for a second visit. Amen. 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 Amen.